Here we're going to talk about strategic alliances. This is one of my favorite uh, marketing strategies. The reason being because it can cost you absolutely nothing to do. You don't need any kind of technical savvy to do it. And it can be extremely powerful. When you get some good strategic alliances set up, I mean, if you have four to five really good strategic alliances, they can provide enough leads that you really don't need to do any other marketing, depending on your business. Now that might be a little bit extreme, but the power is certainly there. I know for my business, strategic alliances are a massive avenue for, for generating leads and for many of my clients too. So what is a strategic alliance? Well, quite simply, it's where one or more businesses who share an ideal client, they work together to help grow each other's businesses. Now it's important those businesses don't compete directly with each other, of course, but think about it this way. If you have, uh, you picture one of your ideal clients that you would like to attract more of, and you find who else they do business with, you develop relationships with those other businesses, and you both help drive traffic to each other's business, well, it's really leverage marketing. Because a st strategic alliance referral, if I, tell us, if I tell one of my clients to go and do business with you, if they trust me and they have a good relationship with me, that's gonna be a very easy conversion and sale for you because, because the trust is inferred. And that's one of the great things about strategic alliances. So let's take a look and see how we set them up. I will warn you, getting strategic alliances up and running is not the easiest process in the world, but it is very powerful once it is up and running. So let's take a look at the steps and you've got the workbook there or you should have, be able to download the workbook there uh, to, to follow along or simply watch the video first and then go through the workbook. Uh, the workbook mirrors what I'm saying here but it gives you some tangible templates there to fill out as you go along. So what are our steps? So step one, step number one is to select your ideal client. Okay, now we've covered this a lot already uh, ideal client with any marketing campaign we want to pick one ideal client and uh, and typically one core offering in this situation we also want to focus on one core offering but we can be a little broader because we're really looking at starting a relationship with another business so we're going to explore all the things that we offer however when it comes to a specific campaign with that strategic alliance we are going to want to pick one core offering but we're not quite at that stage yet so let's just look at the first step so we're going to pick our ideal client Go back to your blueprint, take a look at um, the ideal clients you came up with, if you came up with more than one, and really pick the one that you want to focus on. This is really important because it's going to dictate what businesses you approach and how you approach them and what you're going to say to them um, to make sure you're getting the sort of clients that you want in your door. So now step two, let's pick a different color here. Step two. Step two is where we fill in the strategic alliance wheel. The SA wheel. And there's a copy of this in your workbook. We'll throw a copy up on the screen here. Simply, this shows if you put your ideal client in the middle there, it gives you then room to put eight different categories of businesses that that ideal client potentially also buys from or does business with. And what you want to do is you want to brainstorm. You picture your ideal client and think about, okay, who else do they do business with? either in the same field as what I do, maybe before or after they do business with me, or even at the same time they do business with me, or it can be completely unrelated to, uh, to the sort of business that you do. Like picture you're a, um, let's say one of your ideal clients, say you're a fashion shop, and you're one of your ideal clients is, is middle-aged women of a certain income bracket. Well, you might, uh, you might go and strike up a, an alliance with a car dealership that that sort of person would buy. You know, that's got nothing to do with the clothes that you wear, uh, but it is still a business that that person does business with. So you wanna get eight different categories of businesses and you wanna fill your wheel in there with those categories. And once you've done that, and when you're doing those categories, you're not thinking about specific businesses at this point, although certainly they are gonna to pop to mind because you certainly know some other businesses in these categories, but just get the categories down first if you've got more than eight categories, that's fine too, but let's start with eight. And then uh, we wanna go through and look for specific businesses within those categories. And we wanna pick three to five businesses within, within each category. So on the light side, you know, if we've got three with each, we've got 24 uh, potential businesses. If we've got five under each category, 
we're gonna have uh, 40 potential businesses that we can go after. And this is really important because you're gonna have some businesses in there that you know and you already have a relationship with, which is obviously gonna be some you might target first, and there are gonna be some there you have no relationship with. And in this whole process of developing strategic alliances, you need to understand that it's the minority of businesses that you approach that are gonna turn into fantastic relationships. What I mean by that is, you're gonna talk with a lot of people who are not gonna get what you're trying to do. You're gonna talk with some people who will get it, but just won't seem to be able to follow through or, or execute on the things you guys agree on. And you're gonna to talk to some people who really get it and really wanna make it work. Unfortunately, in my experience, they are the minority. So just be aware of that. That's why we wanna have a large list of people to go after so that we can filter through those and get to the stage where we can find the, uh, the few that are gonna make great partners. Okay, so we fill in our, our strategic alliance wheel. Now, step three. Now we're gonna make contact. Now in doing that, there's a few things that we wanna understand before we just jump in there. We want to understand uh, what's our process going to look like. I'm going to expand on that in a second. We want to know what script are we going to be using. And we want to know what sort of background information do we need to, do we need to supply uh, to the person before we're going, to, we're going to meet them. Let's look at the, uh, the process. Oops, two S's there. Let's look at the process first. Now what's going to happen here is step one, or let's call it step A, is going to be a phone call. And that call it is either going to be to someone you know or someone you don't know and we're going to go through the script of what you're going to say. But your goal is to set up a first meeting. First meeting, which is really a discovery process. All right, in that meeting, you wanna be focused 100% on them. You wanna be asking them questions about their business um, you know, in the right way. You don't wanna be prying uh, inappropriately, but you wanna understand what their goals are, how's business been for them, how long they've been in business. You know, what's their story? Really get to know them. Uh, what do they do for marketing now? What's working, what's not working? What are their major challenges? And you're going to talk about some things outside the, the realm of marketing as well. You might talk about people, employees, you might talk about family. I mean, you're looking here to build a connection with these people, get to know them. But taking the, the viewpoint of really putting yourself in their shoes and asking questions to get to know them really well, it does two things for you. One, obviously it, it gets you to know them so you can find out how you can best help them. But secondly, it also puts you in a position where you're showing authentic interest in that person and that builds a deeper relationship faster because they're gonna see, oh, you're not here just to serve yourself. You really are interested in them and you need to be. You need to be interested in, in them and finding out what's important to them. So that's your, your process there. Maybe in the first meeting, they're gonna ask you as well about yourself uh, and if they do, obviously that's an opportunity to expand on yourself and tell them a bit about you. If they don't ask you about you, that's fine. Um, understanding that most people that you sit down and have this conversation with are not gonna be experienced in setting up strategic alliances. You're gonna be the driver of this process uh, and the leader. So you have to be okay with walking them step by step. But if they, so let's say after the first meeting, you spend a whole lot of time talking to them, asking them questions and getting a really good feel for, for who they are you might then say, if you believe that there's potential between you and them, you might then say, listen, Jill, I've really enjoyed uh, connecting here. I've learned a ton about your business. And from what I see, I think there can be massive value in the two of us working together. Now, I recognize there's gonna be a bit of work involved in doing that. I'd like to know how you feel. Uh, do you think there's potential too? And she's either gonna say yes or no, or something along those lines. Assuming she says yes, you might then say, well, great, let's, if, let's make a commitment then to, to pencil out two or three more meetings uh, with the understanding that anyone can cancel at any time if we feel it's not a good use of our time. But let's do that so we've got something in the books and we've got some commitment to uh, investing a bit of time. 
And then at our next meeting, what I'd like to do, if it's okay with you, is tell you a bit more about my business so you can start to get an understanding where the, where the fit might be. And we can start to brainstorm some ideas at that meeting on, on some ways that we could potentially work together. And then maybe at the third meeting, we can go into a little more detail of, uh, of those ideas and shortlist our top one or two and start to look at some specific actions that we can take and some timelines to start to bring something together. Look, does that sound fair? Um, so that's the kind of positioning there. So don't worry if you don't get to talk about yourself in the first meeting because you're going to position and do it in the second meeting. So part C, the second meeting, second meeting. All right, this is going to be uh, about you if you haven't done that already. About you and ideas, brainstorming ideas, ideas to work together. Okay, so out of the second meeting, our goal is not to have concrete actions that we're going to do X, Y, and Z, or maybe it is. If you know the person really well, you're going to move forward at a faster pace. I'm sort of going through this, assuming that it's a cold contact that you've never met before. So in, uh, in the third meeting then, so D is going to be our third meeting. Third meeting. We're going to get to our, our short list of ideas. Short list and start to dra get a draft of a draft of an action plan. Now maybe you'll get to the stage where you finalise all that in the meeting. If you don't, if you're just at the draft stage or, or part of a draft stage, then obviously you're going to need uh, a fourth or even fifth meetings. You know, word of warning here, be careful about having too many meetings, otherwise it starts to become more of a drain than a value add. It, it all depends on the situation, how well things flow, how well you connect. And I will also add that at these meetings, the third, fourth, and fifth, it can be a good idea if you've got other people in your business, or they do, um, who are gonna be instrumental in pulling some of these ideas and strategies together, then you wanna include them in that meeting. So you're all there to, talking about the same thing. Um, but that, that's it, basically the first one is the discovery. You're asking a lot of questions about them, you're getting to know them, showing genuine interest. Second meeting, you get a chance to talk about you if you don't get around to that in the first meeting and all starting to brainstorm some ideas here. Okay, third meeting, so you're going away from the second meeting with some ideas, but coming back to the third meeting with, hey, here are the ones that I really like or I think could work. And you, you compare notes on that and then agree on the top one or two and even the top one and then start to map out some, some actions or what, how that could potentially work. Looking at timing, looking at who's gonna do what, looking at costs involved, all, all that sort of stuff. And then as required, fourth and fifth meetings. Now these meetings ideally are face-to-face, -face, but not always. I mean, I have clients that, you know, who have set strategic alliance up and I've done it myself in remote uh, situations, having never met someone. Or it's only feasible to meet someone face-to-face -face once, you know, here and then you do the rest of it by, by Skype or by phone. You know, a lot of collaboration can be done uh, virtually these days. So that's kind of the process and you wanna have an idea of what that needs to look like for you. Now, I've given you a, a sort of an outline, a format there as a generalization, but you gotta adapt it to your own style and work out the, the best way for you to do things. So that's the first thing there. Then uh, the script that we're gonna use. So the script is basically, I mean, I gave you an example of the script at the end of the first meeting, assuming you, you see value there. Uh, I'll give you a script for the, the first meeting, and I've given you a script in the workbook too. This one's gonna be slightly different, I'm just doing this off the cuff. Uh, but the way I would approach it is, say I'm calling someone cold, and let's say for me, it's a, for my business, it's, it's an accountant. Business coach, work, I work with a lot of accountants. So I would say, let's say the guy's name is Bill. I'd say, hi Bill, Jamie Cunningham calling, uh, business coach, wondering if I uh, can have a minute of your time. And Bill's gonna say, sure, what's up? I say, Bill, I, uh, I've been very successful in growing my business through developing strategic partnerships and strategic alliances. And in asking around, your name has come up repeatedly as, uh, as a guy who's pretty good at what he does. And I'm wondering if you'd be interested in having a, a, a 10 or 15 minute conversation just to meet each other and exploring any avenues or opportunities of how we might work together. 
I wonder if that would be of interest to you. And Bill's either going to say, no, nah, not interested, or, and I've never actually had anyone say that, or he's going to say, oh, yeah, that, that sure, I, I'll give you a 15-minute conversation, no, no problem. And uh, so then I'd say, great, Bill, listen, I know you don't know anything about me. How about I send you a little bit of information prior to us meeting, and we go ahead and set the time and the date. So I'm going to fire that off to you. I'll send you a link to my website too, just to give you a bit of background uh, research of who I am. And then uh, when we get together, we can learn a bit more about each other and decide from there if it's worth us uh, investing any more time to work together. End of story. Uh, I keep it very non-threatening, very sort of, um, you know, relaxed if you like. Uh, and you've got it. That's my style. Like you've got to apply your own style to that. Uh, but the goal is to reach out and start booking some meetings. So that's that's your script. You want to know, uh, have an idea. I mean, I I started with a, a written script, like completely written out. You can see a version of uh, of one in the workbook. But generally, what I try and do is once I've written all out verbatim, I'll then bring it back to bullet points, and I'll talk from bullet points because that way I don't sound scripted. It's just it's a little more natural. So in the background, you see there in talking with Bill, I had said to him, listen, Bill, you probably don't know anything about me. How about I put some information uh, in the mail for you or send you a link to my website? And you want to be prepared to do the same thing. If there are people you're meeting uh, that you need to establish credibility with, have a little package. It can simply be a one page You're talking about you and your business. It can be a link to your website. But the more professional and prepared you appear to be, the better first footing you have in developing that relationship and the better chance you're giving of succeeding. So that's step three. So step four. Step four is, you call it filtering. Right? Filtering, here's what I mean by that. You've identified up to 40 potential strategic alliance partners up here. And your goal is to get three, four, five partners who really work well with you and give you sustainable lead generation um, ongoing. In my experience, what happens is that if you meet with someone, the odds of them becoming a good partner is about a 10%. Uh, I believe you need to meet with seven to 10 businesses to get down to one. And that's going to be partly you deselecting them by just saying, look, I just don't think they're going to be a good fit. And it's going to be partly them deselecting themselves. Either they're not going to get back to you in time or they're just going to seem wishy-washy or they're just not going to be interested. And that's fine. So the, the, and that's what really the filtering is. It's going through and having meetings with various people and you're going to get a feel for who's a good fit and who's not. And you're going to come down to your shortlist. Once you get to your shortlist, that is step five. Step five, the finalists. It's these finalists that you're going to be conducting, you know, meetings three, four, and five with. There are going to be some others that are going to drop off up here. And that's cool. That's fine. You want that to happen. You can't set up 40 strategic alliances. It just wouldn't be manageable. Um, so step five is the finalists. And the last bit, Step six is the execution and momentum. The momentum is really the important part here. I mean, the execution comes out from the finalists and the action plans that you're going to create together. But the momentum is really key. Um, we can all go into these things with the best of intentions and it's all exciting when we first start and your, your partner is going to be excited too. Hey, this sounds great. We can do all this stuff together. Invariably, life starts to get in the way. Business starts to get in the way. People get busy. So unless we're very intentional about our momentum plan and how we're going to keep communication on going, these things can fall right off. So there has to be commitment put forward and reaffirmed at each of these stages, right? At here, you're both going to commit with the best of intentions. They're going to say, hey, yeah, it sounds good. But you're going to start to see how their actions line up with their commitment as you go through the process. When you get down to here and you're at the final stage, you really want to reaffirm 
Hey, listen, Jill, this is going really well so far. How do you feel about it? Awesome. Look, I think we both need to acknowledge that what can happen here is that if we, because we're meeting consistently now to get things up and running, and, and that's great, if we leave it at this, if we just ex go away and execute and we don't stay in touch, invariably um, the world works that things are going to get in the way and we're going to get dropped off. Let's have an agreement that we're going to keep touch base on a regular, a, a regular basis. And that can be a, a monthly coffee, just sitting down for a chat. It can be a weekly phone call. It can be a quarterly planning session together. It, I mean, it doesn't really matter what it looks like as long as it's consistent and it's frequent enough so you've got the momentum there. Particularly if you've got a, a plan in place where you should get measurable, measurable results from it, uh, then you want to have a mechanism for giving that feedback to each other of how it's working. And the more frequent you do that, the more top of mind awareness it becomes. So this is a really, really important point. And why, one of the reasons why this is one of the more difficult strategies, although it's simple in context and you don't need to have uh, any particular skills to do it, um, having the, the discipline to keep the momentum and the communication ongoing is usually the falling down point for most of these, uh, most of these relationships. So in looking at how you actually do it, we're gonna cover that in the next video, the automation of the relationship, as much as you can do that, the better, because it doesn't require your effort to, to keep things moving forward. Um, but I just, I'll issue that warning to you to make sure you pay really good attention to this part here, because um, that can be the, the downfall. But that's the process, and you've got that in your workbook. Uh, invest the time on the strategic alliance wheel, you probably need a good couple of hours to, to flush that one out. And then, you know, if you made the uh, commitment to having a meeting a week or a couple of meetings a month with potential partners, you gotta decide what you want the outcome to be, which is really the first part of the process, having a goal. If you said, okay, each quarter in the next 12 months, I wanna develop one good strategic alliance, so at the end of the year, I've got four, then you know, okay, this quarter, I need to be meeting with 10 strategic alliance partners in hope of getting one. And recognize it's gonna be a timing uh, to have all the meetings and flush it all out. So you wanna start at the very beginning. You wanna go hard with meetings in the beginning and know that they're gonna gradually get less and less as different potential partners drop off or get deselected. But eventually, when you get down to your top one or two, you'll have meetings with them, but that'll be less meetings. You won't be meeting with 10 people. Okay, so that's it. Um, have fun with it. And if you've got questions, please raise them on, uh, on the conference call. And uh, then when you're ready, go on to the, the next video, which talks about the specific strategies that you can use when working with your strategic alliance partners. Thanks a lot.